Hey guys, got a treat for you. Look! It's not the old Sony Cybershot anymore. Now, we're in 1080p. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Draw With Tea or Draw With Tay. Are you excited? Because holy cow, I am I excited to finally, finally be having people see this episode. I mean, there's nothing really special about the content I am drawing, but what is special is this is the first 1080p video. Oh my gosh, are you guys excited? Because I am so happy. I, I, I got I got I literally have to rein it in because I will scream so loud the mic audio will just go bananas. Oh, just seeing this in 1080p is making me so excited. I think I'm gonna have to go for a jog after this. Holy cow! And that's gonna be weird because as the time I'm recording this at like 9 p.m. and it's dark out, you know, and the fact of me just running, running around the street excited because because of 1080p. I know it seems strange. Well, actually, does it seem strange? Um, I know YouTube is gotten very, uh, what's the word? High quality? I mean, I remember a time when YouTube was just shot with whatever the heck. You'd be upload, it would be uploaded and you have no idea. It'd be like going on a, like a lottery. You had no idea what was going to happen, really. What you'd, what video you'd get, what would actually be the content. It'd be grimy, it'd be rough, there'd be a lot of uh, uh, bad editing, you know, uploaded straight from the camera. And now it's so polished and it's, you know, 4K quality and like this super expensive audio stuff. Cameras that are no less than like $3,000 when you include all the lenses. Um, whole studio teams with like motion graphic artists and writers and holy crap, who would have thought YouTube would have gone got this way? So yeah, I mean, I know stuff has moved on to 4K, but hey, you know what? I am just so happy to now be in 1080p land. Like, wow. Uh, I'm also just very, very happy to have a webcam now, which basically means I can shoot continuously. And uh, in case you guys may have missed it, I may have said it, I may have not. Uh, the camera I was shooting with uh, could only shoot for about 29 minutes and then it would automatically shut off. So what that meant is uh, I would have to, uh, you know, shoot 29 minutes and I rarely get a page done in that time. So then I'd have to literally wait for the camera to cool down. Um, and then I would, uh, you know, take a few minutes there and then get back up and uh, turn it on again. Have to reset the zoom and then hit go again. And, you know, I had to have a timer. I had to keep an eye on the timer and I had to make sure that I was, you know, would wouldn't draw past the the camera going off because that was that would be annoying and then you guys miss some stuff and whatever i did pretty good i did pretty good but now i don't have to worry about that anyways i do apologize for going into a technical rant before even talking about what i'm drawing here and i'm already two drawings in i am sorry this is another late night drawing i believe maybe it was an early one you know what i don't remember i was so ecstatic to be drawing with this camera i just you know, that was the only thing in my head. So, moving on from the big cats that we drew, that I drew in the last episode. Uh, I mean, maybe you drew along with me. Hey, that'd be really cool. I mean, it is called Draw With Me. Uh, I actually have a tangent on that. Let's see if I remember it by after I introduce what I'm doing here. So basically, I'm doing studies of horses, again, drawing from Pinterest. And I've actually done studies of horses before. So, you know, I, I felt a little bit confident going into this. Like, yes, yeah, so there's this shape and this shape. I, I still learned a lot from doing this because when I previously did the horses, I kind of half-assed it. I don't remember why. There were reasons and I drew them a lot smaller. I think I was doing 30 second gestures of horses, which is kind of hard. Um, so yeah, there was, I was, my goals were different back then than they were for drawing these. So yeah, I was, you know, just trying to, draw horses and I was originally just after the hind limbs and how that worked for horses but as I drew these I was having so much fun again um was it two episodes ago I was talking about having fun um 
drawing bird wings, and the one before that I was having fun uh, with osprey heads. Here I was, I was jamming. I was having fun with these horses. Yeah, they were a little difficult, and I had a whole bunch of trouble with getting the limbs to sit on the same field, as you see with this one here. This one is quite atrocious, but uh, you, you can only learn by making mistakes, right? And at least here I, I take the time to, to kind of fix it a few times over. Uh, yeah, so um, what I took away from drawing this, and again, I'm drawing these horses as a sort of study for what I need to know for drawing a griffin slash hippogriff. Um, what I basically came to the conclusion of with this is I, I, I might just heavily base, I might I might use the horse as a heavy base for uh, for the griffin. Like, uh, I, admittedly, I'm kind of not a huge fan of how the front limbs of a horse are, but I might skip the whole big cat thing and just, you know, combine a horse with a bird, which is... I know, that's just a hippogriff. If I just stuck with the hippogriff to begin with, I would be there too, but, uh, you know, sometimes when you explore stuff, uh, you, you do quote-unquote find, you know, reinvent the wheel or find something cool, and then sometimes you don't, and that's okay. I mean, my intention was to do a hippogriff from the start. I just wanted to be able to uh, draw it competently. Also, I think here my pencil broke three times in a row. Like, it was just, yeah, I'm getting frustrated there. Yeah, I was actually frustrated when I was drawing this page, maybe. I, maybe it was late, because I'm looking at this and I'm having fun. Uh, but clearly, Tegan at the time is not having fun. In fact, yeah, I think she's she's having a bad time here. That's too bad. I mean, sometimes that happens too. Does that happen to you? Artist friends, does that happen to you where you, uh, you are so frustrated when you draw, but you look back at what you drew and you're like, I don't know why I was ever upset by this. This is actually a good page. I think in episode four, I, I titled it like, you know, Facing a Failure. And it was a little bit of a clickbaity title. I only had four episodes lined up at the time and I'm like, well, I could be drawing lots of Griffin armor. So I guess I can't just call it Griffin armor. Also, nobody's gonna search for Griffin armor. Like that's like who, who, who needs a griffin armor tutorial and then who would want to click on it and then see some not great preliminary drawings right anyways yeah um what was i talking about earlier shoot well guys sorry i i guess i i guess i kind of forgot um i'm sure it'll come back up uh, at some point here um hmm well, it'll bother me a bit. I bet you if I go actually screaming down the street at, street at 9 p.m., it'll, like, come back to me and then maybe I'll splice it in, but I'll probably, probably forget. Sorry about that, guys. I'm sure I'll find something else interesting to talk about. Um, yeah, so basically I decided, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna base uh, Storm Screech kind of on a horse, because horses... I can kind of draw them a little bit better than big cats. The big cats just confuse me. You know, the horses are like, yeah, I don't really have, you know, I haven't, I've had probably less contact with horses in my life than with cats. And for some reason, they're just a little bit easier to draw. I was thinking about like why maybe cats are harder to draw. And I kind of remember all the times I've cat sit for people and like, holy crap, cats are kind of, semi-liquid, aren't they? Like, I've seen memes about this, but man, some of the cats, they just, like, sort of melt in weird ways. It's like their anatomy is a little bit non-existent, and maybe that's what makes it hard. Maybe I just don't understand their level of elasticity yet. But horses, I don't know, they just seem a bit more solid, a little easier to draw. And I here I didn't really do any manes or details or anything. I uh, just, you know, I'm just after the limbs, I'm just after uh, the sort of body shape, not even really focus on the head because the head isn't going to be, uh, Storm Screech's head is not a, not a horse's head. Um, I didn't even really have to focus so much on the four limbs, but uh, I did, and I'm, and I'm honestly glad I did because, uh, you know, it's good to see how the actual animal does kind of function because I'm going to be replacing that, and that could be a bit of an issue. Like, uh, you know, if I put, you know, kind of like birds' hind limbs in the front, that kind of changes how the creature lies down and all that, and, and 
whatnot. And I'm sorry, I'm just really bothered by whatever it was I was going to talk to you guys about because I forgot. And I thought I could hold it on for for a, for a while, but I guess not. Unfortunately, I have ADD, and um, remembering things is not my strong suit. And ironically, sometimes I forget that. Well, actually, I really don't. I really don't. That's as funny as that joke would be. I don't forget that I can't remember things. It's not really a thing. Like, I, my, my short-term memory sucks, but my long-term memories were actually really eerily good. It shouldn't be this good. It's, you know, you can give me a phone number, I'll forget in five seconds. Heck, I'll forget it as you're telling it to me. But, you know, I, I still have weird factoids stuck in my head from, like art college days, little factoids of, of things I learned in art history or, or previous to that, even like weird facts from middle school and all that. Of course, I can't think of anything to give you guys an example of at this moment because, you know, my recall isn't great unless I'm primed to. Like, if you just bring up a certain weird topic, I'll be like, well, actually, blah, 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 and I'll sound so smart. And I just hope I get most of it right, because I, I'm starting to get to a point now in my life where some of the really far things, I'm like, maybe I just merged three different things together. And I, I'm starting to get to a point where my art history knowledge, the things I learned in art school, I'm now pretty sure they're all starting to slur together. I, I used to... There was a point where I, like a year after graduation, if a new student had come up to me and said, hey, what did you do for the third project in this class? I could, I would know, bam, I would know instantly. But, oh yeah, that project, oh yeah. Uh, what teacher do you have? Because I had so-and-so and, -so, and uh, yeah, I remember it was October and I really hated that project. It was raining outside a lot and like, I just couldn't get the lighting for the assignment and like what was I supposed to do like really it's well what's what am I supposed to do but I ended up doing this and I actually went overboard and I did blah 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 blah. that's yeah that's that's me uh, but now that I if you ask me like hey did you take this class and if you did or you know what when did you take this class I'd be like uh ooh, crap was that the one where we did this or the one where we did that I mean, to my credit, my, the later classes I took, the names were just there for registrar reasons. Basically, you could pitch anything you wanted to do in the classes, so it could be called animation slash media, which ironically was a real class, and we had neither animation nor media that we made in it. Point and case. Um, you could basically just pitch anything, like if you wanted to do just old master studies, you could. If you could pitch your case. Uh, yeah, so th that whole thing slurred together because I got to the point where I combined, or I used one project and combined it in two classes. And the entire fourth year of my college was just me working on my personal animation project, Kalismir, because, you know, I could, and I did, and it ended up being a lot more complicated than I thought, but hey, I love it. We all need a, we all need a hobby horse. <laughs> oh. I love bad puns. I really do. But yeah, no, in all seriousness, like, we all need, we all need hobbies. And mine just happens to be a very, very, very large uh, fantasy story that I want to tell. And I'm willing to learn to write and draw better in doing so. And I mean, if I never get it done, hey, at least I will have learned so much. I wouldn't have just sitting on my hands waiting for somebody to hire me to fulfill something that they wanted to do. Also, I'm just not that kind of person. Uh, I am a little bit, I don't know, I have a hard time dedicating large amounts of time to other people's stuff if it has no benefit to me. Um, even in like art jobs, because the thing is, I, I've got stories I want to tell and I'm very, I, I actually, I don't just think about it, I actually go home and I sit down and I work on them. I'm actually, I, when I say I, I'm working on something, I mean every week I work on it multiple times. I mean most of what I draw is to do with it unless I'm, you know, I've got to make money drawing other stuff or, you know, I'm, I'm not just a dreamer. I'm legitimately doing it is what I'm trying to say here. And I've basically not talked about horses very much this entire episode, have I? 
Like, uh, sorry if you guys were hoping for some insights on how to draw horses. To be honest, I, I don't really have any. I feel very new at drawing horses, and I don't think I can say much other than the limbs are more spindly than you think. Uh, I know, like, when I was drawing them this time around, I purposely did these sort of exaggerated circles for, like, the knees and the wrists. And, like, you know, I made everything spindly, and maybe I pushed it a little too far in some cases. Like, the, the knees, the knee knobs are very big, but, uh, you know, it's part of, part of practicing sometimes, a little bit of exaggeration. Here I'm just kind of doing some horse gestures, filling up the page nice and, nice and full. But, yeah, that's, uh, basically it, guys. Um, thanks for watching, and see you in the next 1080p episode. Also, what do you think of this as an ending page? Because I can't zoom in with the webcam. Let me know.